Welcome to Closers, brought to you by Man Cave Sports. I am the DA, former closer, and with me, as always, is my lovable companion, my life partner, James, uh, and he's the loser part of Closers. Uh, James, how you doing today, man? Well, you mentioned that I'm a loser, so every day is just another day. Just another one. That's uh, It is what it is for you. I'm sorry to hear that, James. But no, man, uh, one thing I was, uh, I watched, I watched a little bit of an episode once. It got me thinking, wanted me to ask you, James, are you a, a, a Hard Knocks fan? I love Hard Knocks. I get to watch it every year. It's one, it's uh, appointment viewing for me. Appointment viewing. That's a new one. I haven't heard that, but uh, I love Hard Knocks, dude. I've, I have always been a huge fan of Hard Knocks, um, mm-hmm. especially the Lions one. I, I got all, dude, I was like gung-ho Lions uh, last year and, and I get all into it. Do you think, and I was thinking about this, do you think it changes how people perceive the players uh, on those teams? Do you think people think the players are, like, they start, like, getting behind the players more? And do you think that adds pressure to those guys? Okay, this is a great question. I absolutely think that people will follow the players that they deem to be good people. We talked about it with Pete Rose. We're not going to root for Pete Rose because when you watch him on TV, he looks like an arrogant prick. Now, these kids, on the other hand, when they show that they have great personalities, when they show that they're dogs, that they just want to win, you start rooting for them. I want you to think about some of the names that they've talked about on Hard Knocks. You talked about Hutcherson from the Lions. You talk about Amon Ross St. James from the Lions. You talk about... Malik Neighbors, who was in this offseason uh, Giants Hard Knocks, which, by the way, I found just absolutely fascinating. I would love to see one with another team. And you go back through the years. Darren Waller, when they were looking at the uh, Raiders, there's always guys that are great stories that, you know, you end up rooting for them, and their brand just explodes. You think Darren Waller would have gotten the money from the Giants last year that he did if he wasn't the quote-unquote star of that year's Hard Knocks and people were really following him? Well, I don't know. From a money perspective, they might have still gotten the money because from an agent uh, if you're keep talking about on-field production, all that stuff, like an agent can would would we talk about that? But there is a part of it where it's like a marketing value. Having him on your team raises your team's value. You can sell more stuff. You can make more money having players that are more nationally recognizable, right? And and, and from a media standpoint, so that's that is a great thing. It also provides such great insight and um, like one-liners, right? Who is it? I, and I was a Kamardi. Uh, maybe I'm killing the name here where, where he couldn't name his kids. Oh, yeah. Antonio Cromartie and his 77 oh, kids. That was the best. That was the funniest thing. And, I, and I'll also never forget um, uh, uh, Amon St. Ra, whatever, how many, many different names he wants to have, where he's catching the ball from the machine. He says, I do 200 every single day, and he's setting it up. And that immediately gave me an opportunity to talk to my like flag football team and, and the kids saying, hey, like if you want to get serious, watch this. Watch what he does. This is somebody who is already a professional, who's already on an NFL roster and wants to get better, and this is what he does every day. Why don't you try to do something like this? And I actually had a couple of my kids start having their parents throw balls every single day, like like 50 to 100 balls every day. And you know what? They got so much better. And so anyways, I, I love that part of it. How was – I, I do got to ask you this because I didn't watch it. I'm not a New Yorker. I'm not a big, big New York Giants fan, so I could really care less. I love the Hard Knocks franchise, but the, the off-season one. How was that different watching the Giants as an off-season Hard Knocks? So there was very few players that were involved in it. It was only, you know, the guys who were in the draft. They would show the interview process with those draft well, cool. draftable players, which is really cool. But, you know, because he was the guy they ended up drafting, Malik Neighbors, you know, they focused him on him a lot. And now, even though I'm a Jets fan, and there's no ill will between Jets and Giants fans, but I'm rooting for this kid because he's just a dog. You heard it all the time. He wants to win. But part of that is you also saw that he wants to win so bad when he's not getting the ball. Is he going to be a jackass? These are all the questions that come up when you watch this stuff. And again, we talked about it. His brand has grown as a result. But going back to the Giants offseason one, it was so cool to watch 
and see Joe Shane, the GM of the uh, Giants, what he was going to do when it came down to Saquon Barkley and if they were going to keep him. And there was a lot of talk about them moving up to draft a quarterback. And you're wondering how Daniel Jones responded to all that stuff. All that was just so cool. You know me. I'm so much more into the behind the scenes than I am what actually happens on the field. So for me, that was just Christmas in July. And I, I think that explains you probably the best. And you said is you love the off field, off field stuff. You love the behind the scenes. You love the trade deadline that you love um, talking about trade deadline. That is your big free agency, like that sort of things. I think you love way more than talking about the season itself. And so hard knocks, it, it kind of like goes right in your wheel alley, right? Like mm -hmm. just puts on a T for you. And what it is perfect is, is the NFL has done an incredible job of, with fantasy football, again, I, I truly believe, and I'll say this a thousand percent, I try to argue against it, that the reason the NFL is so so successful is because of gambling and fantasy football gambling. It went exactly with fantasy football. NFL was at a low, whatever it was, 10 years ago. Fantasy football took off. It took off right with it. Uh, it gives you a reason to watch all the games, but it gives you a reason to watch individual players. And mm -hmm. now you're doing all these hard knocks. You're doing the offseason hard knocks. You're doing the, the, the preseason hard knocks. And now you're going to do the AFC North uh, during the whole regular season, which gives you four teams or five teams. I, I don't remember. Uh, whatever it is, it gives you that opportunity to watch these teams every day. It connects you with players. It connects you with personalities. It grows player brand and it grows team brand through the roof. Uh, it's incredible. And what bothers me the most out of all of this is that Major League Baseball is sitting on their hands and still closed-minded to doing anything like this. They're really bad when it comes to this. They need a hard knocks for spring training. Yes. So we can root for guys to make the club. So we can see these guys who will make the club, who are the highly touted rookies. How much would you have loved to have watched a show that was hard knocks-esque following the Cincinnati Reds so you can see the most electrifying player in the game today, Ellie De La Cruz. That smile, that million dollar smile, his speed, his aggressiveness. That's the kind of guy that baseball should be promoting the hell out of. And how do you do that? By letting the kids see what he's like off the field. You don't know what any of these players are like off the field. Unless no. you're in a position like you, that you've played in Major League Baseball, or like me, that has worked in the, uh, in the media. You don't know what these guys are like. So you you talk about the Reds. Ellie Dale Cruz is amazing. That, that'd be a lot of fun. Now that's that's a that's one of the most exciting players in all of baseball. He what he does on the field is in, insane. But I would actually I, I would give you that and and raise you two others that I think would have been incredible. And it's just it's such an easy grab is the Baltimore Orioles and the Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates, Baltimore Orioles. Those two this spring training would have been absolutely incredible to watch insane hard knocks goes out and films uh they do a lot of pre-stuff and then they film and they're ready like one week later right so you're seeing it in re almost in real time you mentioned it daniel jones daniel jones in the in, you know during the offseason when they're talking about do they move a quarterback San Juan, there's a lot of conversations behind closed doors that um it's tough for a player to hear at the same time Somehow, some way, the NFL, NFL, PA, whatever, if they have zero power in this, maybe that's one thing. But they've gotten over it and they don't care and they love it because it grows their brand. Baseball just has to get over it and, and, and stop thinking uh, old school mindset and, and start going this new school, have fun mindset or be open minded with this. Because if I'm watching the Baltimore Orioles spring training and I'm getting to know Jackson Holiday, I'm getting to go, know Mayo, I'm getting to know... Um, Curious that I mean, I'm gonna know the whole all of those rookies, and then you're seeing how the veterans are handling knowing you're you're looking down and you're a second baseman and you're seeing the future of major league baseball st sitting there in triple A or sitting there in spring training and getting all the press. And you, it's your position right now, or you're right fielder and you're, you're seeing this, or you're the pirate and you're the a starter and pitcher, and you're looking at Paul Skeens and going, uh oh, you know, like I want to hear those interviews, I want to feel what it feels like to have to be in those shoes. And then I want to see what it's like for Paul Skeens to have to respect veterans while trying to find his own way and to see and to make his way and then not make the team and then 
come up weeks later and see how he is at home with Livy Dunn. Maybe we just should do an episode on Livy Dunn. But- <laughs> I was waiting for you to mention her because you were so full of shit. The only reason you want to see the Pirates on Hard Knocks was to see more Livy Dunn. Go ahead, deny it all you want, but I know the truth. <laughs> Yes, but I want to see Falter. I want to see Jones. I want to see. I, I want to see Skeens. I want to see them all react. I want to see how they're handling this together. The pressure of coming up and being the superstar, the next generation, the you know, like this big three-headed monster of rookies and, and all this stuff. I want to see that stuff. And and obviously, throw sprinkle a little Livy Dunn in there. That could never hurt. But but the reality is, Major League Baseball is stuck behind this. Um, this idea that we can't let people in and we can never open those doors. And what happens is when other leagues are opening those doors, like the NBA, you pretty much know everything the NBA is thinking. The NFL, now you're starting to get to see that behind the scenes stuff. Um, hockey, okay, well, hockey's hockey. But baseball, we're still in this such a closed minded thing that we don't know what these GMs ever feel. We don't know if they have feelings. And that's the thing is we sit, we can sit behind keyboards and talk crap all we want or, or praise them all we want. But, like, just give them some insight, man. Give us a little thing. And I, I'm just waiting for a team to just step up and do it themselves and just say, you know what, we're going to handle this. We got this. I know the Giants did a thing, um, you know, whatever, it was a couple of years ago. It wasn't really well I don't know how, if it wasn't well done or just they didn't promote it well enough and it just didn't take off. The uh, We got to say this, and, and we'll, we'll own this, the Red Sox are doing something this year where they're filming their whole season, which is really cool, which I love it. But that's a documentary. That, to me, is a documentary. Like, sh- film it through the year. Show me it the next week. Show me last week. Like, I want to see the Red Sox playing the Yankees, you know, like, they're, they're playing the Yankees. I want to see that in four days. I want to see how that was handled. Show me that. Now we're talking. Now I'm grabbing something. Now I want to. I want to. Ben Rice. Who is Ben Rice? Who? What has he done? Yeah, I'm cool. I'm sure. Um, you know, um, New York channels are, are all over. I'm sure the Yankees network is doing little segment things. No one else sees it. They're, they're, they're tiny little group of people get to see that who are actually watching that and, and whatever that tiny segment of the of the market is. Put on the national stage. Let me MLB network, throw it on HBO, throw it on something and create this different like a people paying attention and and getting to know these players like show me Aaron Judge man give me some personality Aaron but you know you said it Major League Baseball is so fucking close-minded they're going to let you they're gonna follow around the Red Sox and then guess what's gonna happen they're gonna produce it then they're gonna send it back to the Red Sox the Red Sox are gonna say you got to take this out you got to take this out and you got to take this out okay then it goes back to the production people then Major League Baseball looks at it oh we can't discuss that on it Boom, 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 take this out, take this out. So now all of a sudden it's dry, like toast, and nobody's gonna give a shit. Yeah, no one will, will care. No one will, will care at all. Like, like it's so late. Like right now, okay, this 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 just happened, right? Uh, what was it, Jared Duran? Jared Duran yeah. yelled at a fan and used the F word at him. Not 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 the uh, F U word, <laughs> the much worse one. He used the gay slur. Gay slur right at, at a fan. He said it under his breath. He meant it like a big giant finger at him when he, but it came out as the probably you know one of the worst things you could say. And then rightfully so, he's kind of getting owned a little bit, and he needs to own that. Right? He, he used it like they use it on South Park with the bikers. Yeah. So that I want to see in a week how they handle that. I want to see on an episode in, in five days because in four months, five months, I'm not going to really care. In all honesty, I'm not going to give a rat's ass. I'm just yeah. not. And, and no one else will either. He literally like the day, the next day or whatever day before that won the heart and hustle award. Right. Right. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> and then he, and he uses that. So like, let's see that. And, and major league baseball, get your head out of your ass and let's go. Yeah, I I don't know why Manfred is so afraid to do stuff that's going to appeal to the fans. There is no reason why they don't have walk-up music and fireworks like uh, <laughs> like the La Flama Blanca team. Yeah, had. he's batted down. You know, there's no reason they don't do that. Why? Because you're afraid the pitcher's going to throw at the hitter if he hot dogs a little. Guess what? It's going to bring kids to the ballpark. You're great. Okay, that's a crazy idea, but. 
either way, I know you and I know I want to see these players on TV. We want to see them in a hard knocks, MOB hard knocks. Give me behind closed doors. Let me know who's the 24th, 25th, 26th man on the roster. What what do those cuts look like? Let me see those guys in, in spring training, the minor leaguers having to step up and, and do stuff and, and have some fun with it. But that brings me to the next point, James. Speaking of players that we want to see on TV more often, we came up with a list. Our top five players that we would pay to see them play. Now, I know that's kind of a dumb thing to say. Everybody kind of says that. Who would you pay to see? You have to pay to see anybody to play Major League Baseball. But the reality is, who do you want to give your money over to watch them play? Who is, are those players? Who are those top five players that if they came to your major league city, your town, who do you want to see? James, I want to start with you. I want to hear your number five. Well, I didn't rank them five, four, three, two, one. So. You didn't rank them. Okay. No, I just I didn't fought. either, actually. I was going to just try to rank them right now in my head. Like, <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just give you my five, and I'm sure that we're going we're gonna to overlap on a lot of them, and you just tell me if there's anybody that I'm missing. So for me, it's... Aaron Judge, uh, every time Otani's in town, I'm definitely going to see Otani. I want to see Ellie De La Cruz because that guy is just sick. I would love to see Paul Skeens pitch. And can I bring in a team? Because if you talk about that team with the, with the Orioles, I just want to see all of them. I want to see Gunnar Henderson. I, I want to see Jackson Holiday. I want to see Adley Rushman. You know, all three of them, they're just awesome young players. I would love to see all three of those guys play. But for shits and giggles, Gunnar Henderson, number five. Gunnar Henderson? All right. I, I, I dig that. That's a good list. It's a good list. I I, I, uh, I didn't come with a team because that wasn't the rules, James. But but I appreciate you changing the rules. That's actually usually what I do is is take whatever rules you give me and then go, no, nah, I'm good with this. I'm going to do my own thing. All right. <laughs> Screw him. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm just going to add my own thing. I, whatever. Um, Otani's an easy one. Otani's easy. I, 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 just every time Otani steps up and plays a game of baseball, he's doing something that's never happened before. Right now, I know he's just a hitter. But he's going to be pitching again next year, uh, whatever capacity they'll be figuring that out. But every time he plays a baseball game, I want to watch because it seems special. Aaron, by the way, because- while we're on the subject of Otani, I was thinking about this yesterday because yeah. you know I want him to be Steve Nebraska. I am going to call it right now. Next season, when he starts pitching again, Otani's going to win the Silver Slugger, the Cy Young, and the MVP. Interesting. Silver Slugger, best hitter in the position. Are you saying that's a DH? Yep. Uh, Cy Young, okay. And MVP. Okay. Put money on it. Actually, right now, what you should do is you should get on like FanDuel or something and put money on that next year. Can I borrow some? Because you know I'm poor. You won't have to bet much because that's going to be pretty impressive win. You'll, 100 bucks will get you a lot on that. Otani. Okay, Otani is Otani. Aaron Judge. I already mentioned him. Aaron Judge. Uh, this is the modern day um, Barry Bonds. Yeah. And what he's doing is absolutely ridiculous. I think we saw four seasons. There's been five seasons in Major League Baseball history with 42 home runs and a 465 on base percentage. I might be wrong on that number. Whatever his on base percentage right now. Um, five seasons of Major League Baseball history. Four of them are Barry Bonds. And one right now is, is uh, Aaron Judge. He still has to uh, improve that o- o- OPS or OPP. Um, or, or keep it there at least for the end of the season. That still hasn't been done, but I, maybe it's even just whoever just reached that one time. But Barry Bonds and then Aaron Judge. So he's doing Barry Bonds type of things, which, as you know, is on another level, and I, I want to see him play with him. I think it comes as a team package. I want to see um, that that kind of kid in right field. Yeah, I don't know if, if you guys have ever heard of him. Juan Soto, new young player on the scene in New York. He's pretty decent. Uh, he's actually not on my list, but I want to just see them both play because you get you get the team package. Um, Paul Skeens, this kid is different. It's just different. It's electrifying. And uh, maybe if I can get in the team section, I will be done. I uh, sit next to him. Um, <laughs> Ellie De La Cruz, uh, I got to see him play. It's just electric. It's different. And it looks so slow. It's smooth is what it is. Like I use the term slow because it just looks like he's just moving at a different pace. Like his just slow pace. And then you're paying attention and he's already like past second base. 
because it just looks so smooth. It doesn't look like he's running fast, but it's happening so fast that you're seeing him like almost look slow motion, but he's just gone. It's ridiculous. I don't know how the right way to say it. It's so smooth. It doesn't look like he's trying. And yet he's just gone. And the only other one that that you didn't have, I love the Orioles. I, I, I'm 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 100% on the Orioles. Corbin Burns, I want to see him throw all that stuff. O'Neill Cruz. O'Neill Cruz, um, I think he's a poor man's Ellie Dale Cruz right now. He still has to put some things together. I think Ellie Dale Cruz just has his game a lot really tight. O'Neill Cruz is like him without coaching. Obviously, he's had a lot of coaching, but like he's just raw, more raw. Right. Because when he hits the ball, he throws it. I mean, he's, he, he was doing all those things that Ellie Dale Cruz is doing. He's just not doing it consistent the same amount. Um, so he's the, he's who I want to see. And then the other thing, which again, because I get to create this list, I get to do whatever I want to do. I want to see the new all of the closers like walk ups, like Duran, like um, or is that Duran? Who is it from uh, Minnesota? It's Duran, right? Uh, if memory serves, yeah. Oh, dude, Minnesota closer. Like I, his video, like video of his closer, his like come out like with the with the lights off and the music, and they like combine three different songs. I mean, I'm having train. I'm I'm training like pitchers, and they're coming to me, dude. I, like, have you seen this? It's ridiculous. I would have loved to have seen Diaz's a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Like when he first came out, and they did the 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 trumpet and all that stuff would have been just insane. What they're doing with all the lights and turning off the lights and stuff, like they're making it WWE, right? They're making it an end. Yes, and that brings people to the ballpark and that gets videos and that gets clips and 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 the entrance music and the songs and the the lights now you're you're able to do whatever you want the lights and flames and stuff it's incredible and i wish i pitched in this day and age to be able to have that for like myself and get to go those stadiums like like i never rooted to be losing baseball games but i did kind of root to get to see guys pitch like oh god i want to see mariana walk out like i want to see you know trevor hoffman getting to see hell's belt could you imagine hell's bells now with trevor hoffman running out or or metallica with with, with you know enter sam man gagne with welcome to the jungle in la like because that was one of the first ones where they started becoming it became more than a song like mariano and, and trevor like that was the song that was awesome but it, you never quite felt like they owned it it was just there and it was great and it was a lot of fun and then Gagne comes out and you're like oh like this is a little different and that's what you finally got the LA crowd getting going and into it and then like everything changed at that point the moment like the moment he started having his like everybody started realizing you can make a lot of money selling that moment you realize that if you were a closer now and we are the friends that we are now, I would have made sure to screw with you. I would have bribed somebody with the organization for you to come out to the song Big Balls by ACDC because you throw a lot of balls, you've got balls, and it just would have been hilarious. That had been great. I've actually, I actually thought about doing uh, Big Balls when I was in the minor leagues and then like, coming up and stuff. I actually did. I had to bet my financial manager in the minors that I wouldn't come out with Fat Bottom Girls. Hmm. And so I came out to Fat Bottom Girls, and that was a great one. That was actually, like, that's pretty, pretty funny. Um, yeah, I was, I, great, a great day to be alive. I, Travis Tritt was like my first one. It just put me in a great mood. I had that for starting when I was a starter. And then, um, yeah, Fat Bottom Girls. And then I did Hell's Bells in college. Did that, but you can't do that once you're in the pros. You can't. You, right. you just can't, dude. Like, someone else has it. Then, uh, yeah, um, Ladies and Gentlemen, which is an incredible, like, song with the lyrics. And, like, I, like being the showman and, and coming out to the stage, I thought that is, um, I thought it fit me perfect. What would be your walk-up song? I would have to have to pull a La Flama Blanca and come out to Real American. I definitely would do it. You think so? You're, that's your Real American? I am a Real American. I mean, come on. It would be amazing. In fact, I told my buddy Tommy because he's begging me to start pitching again. I don't know if you know, I'm one of the finest softball pitchers in the state of New York, and I really don't want to play, unfortunately, because it just takes too much out of my hip. I'm not able to walk for like four days. But I told him if he wants me to play, he's got to play that before I walk out to the mound. You wouldn't play like, like I can't think of the name. Of it. I, I'm I'm looking at it right now. I can't even think of the name of it, or I can't say the name. Uh, like a like a the Greek like traditional like 
song when you start breaking like no not the sword but dance it's just yeah that would be perfect that that would be funny actually Uh, yeah but don't forget we play with a bunch of greeks so we'd all be playing the same freaking song (laughs) no i'm saying like in the big leagues dude you care about the greek league Oh, I mean, yeah, if I was a professional closer, yeah, I would come out the Zorba the Greek or something Dude, like that. It would that'd be, be legit. That would be pretty legit. awesome. Like, you would have every Greek American and like in baseball, like be like right in your corner. Dude, you'd have, you'd have John Stamos come out and sing, like just like dance to it. And it'd be everything. Can you imagine, though, if I played for the Dodgers and I was the closer and I had the Greek music? You know John Stamos and I would be like this, right? Yeah, 100%. It, or it would at least like he, would, he would say you guys are, but he wouldn't actually want to hang out with him. But well, th- Thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> hey, uh, before we get off of the who you would pay to play, I was just thinking about this. Name me the one guy in the history of baseball that you never got to see that you would want to see play live. Ooh, great question. I mean, again, you can go, um, there's an easy list, right? So the easy list is like um, Babe Ruth, you know, yeah. Walter Johnson, like Bob Gibson. Oh, Bob Gibson. Jackie Robinson. Jackie Ro- Dude, absolutely. Jackie Robinson. I want to sit in that crowd, listen to what he had to put up with, and when it was at its fever. So like when he first walked out, I want to hear that and like be like, this dude is mentally on another level. Like I can't compare to this. Being able to play baseball and handle that. Hank Aaron when he's getting close to to seven fourteen. Oh my God! To be able to, to Willie Mays watch him play every every single day. Probably what he went through too. Guys like Bob Feller. I want to watch um, Latroy Hawkins when he first came up. No. Um, <laughs> Oh my thing, Satchel Page, Josh Gibson, like there's so many names and so many guys like Carmen Kilbrew, I would have loved Mickey Mantle, dude. Like to just hang out with Mickey. I would I don't know if I'd wanna I'd wanna watch Mickey Mantle play, but I think I might pay more to go out with him. And like him and Babe Ruth. If I could like just go have a drink, very cool. I'll see you guys next like tomorrow at game time. Uh, because we're going for this. We're we're going all all out. The be able to hang out with, you know, I never saw Doc Gooden. See Doc Gooden in the '80s and like and like like him and Daryl, like him and Daryl Strawberry. Seeing them play, like Pete Rose, I would have loved to have seen Pete Rose play. But out of everybody, you know, in, in all honesty, my number one would probably be Bob Gibson. I would have loved to watch a game of him pitching, and to see the anger, the balls up and in. You know, I saw Nolan Ryan, so I can't I can't say that. Like, right? Um, I saw Nolan Ryan second to last ever start. Actually, I think it might wow. have been his last start. Um, it was in Anaheim. Uh, uh, he was with the Rangers against the, the Angels. Those guys, but yeah, Bob Gibson, just to see that look on his face, that anger, him, like a f- dropping somebody and him just like chest up, like, let's go, that type of stuff. So I was thinking about this while you were talking because I really don't pay attention when you talk. I just, you know, I uh, speak and that's all that matters. There's one guy that you didn't mention that you're going to say, oh man, are you ready? Yeah. Bo. Bo Bo Jackson. I would have loved to have seen him because you know there's a chance that he will do something that nobody else in the history of sport can do. That's a that's a that's an incredible point. Bo Jackson would have been amazing. And then Willie Mays would have been my second because that guy could do everything. But Bo, can you imagine watching a game where Bo would walk up against the wall, throw out somebody at home, break a bat over his knee, and then hit a 500 home run? Absolutely. What he actually did like every day was so unique and so amazing. You know, like there was a reason why Bo knows. I would watch Bo do anything. <laughs> I'm trying to look at the list like Ty Cobb. Ooh. See Ty Cobb try to like stab somebody it would be pretty cool. Cy Young, you know, I got to see Roger Clemens. I think I got to see Roger Clemens. I don't know. Um I'm just going through this list like Stan Musial would be pretty cool. Ted Williams would be pretty neat. Glover Alexander. Lou Gehrig. Could you imagine being there for Lou Gehrig's speech? Oh man, I would probably cry. Oh, dude, I'd be I'd be in tears. Receiver. I'm a Mets fan, and I still. <laughs> <laughs> Christy Matthewson. Like, I got to watch Albert Pools in person. That's not fun when he's hitting a home run against you. Satchel Page, I would have loved to have seen. Satchel Page. Uh, Roberto Clemente. All right, anyway, we can't go through the whole yeah. list because yes, there's 500 can. players. Yes, we can. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's our show. We can do whatever the hell we want. Yeah, that, that's where I'm at with that. That's a, I'm, I'm a Bob Gibson. You're uh, your Bo. 
Bo or Willie Mays. That's a pretty good list there. Um, but that ends today's show of closers. Oh, um, wait, hold on a second. There's one thing what? that I got to discuss. Oh, while, let's go. While we have the time, did you see or hear what the angry puppy, Mad Dog Chris Russo, did recently? No. So, I don't know if you heard the news. Unfortunately, Billy Bean died. Okay. Do you know which Billy Bean died? Yes. Very. I'm aware of that one. Okay. Because not, not the A, not the A's Billy Bean. Yeah, not the general manager slash owner of the Oakland Athletics. We're talking about the other Billy Bean, one of the first couple of men to ever come out as being gay who played Major League Baseball. And the angry puppy really needs to pull an old yeller. We got to take him behind the shed, shoot him, put him out of his misery. Because when someone says Billy Bean died and you don't ask which Billy Bean, the game has passed you by. I am so tired of his bullshit. He sits there, oh yeah, Billy Bean, the athletics uh, general manager died. Can you believe that? Blah, blah, blah. You don't even ask. Oh, by the way, you bet that if the, uh, if the Diamondbacks make the World Series, you're going to quit. Did you quit? No, because you're full of shit. The industry has passed you by. Okay, you're done, Russo. I understand as someone who grew up listening to you and Mike Francesa in New York that you were a big deal for a long time, but your contracts that you've been getting at SiriusXM, and I know you're not going to mention this because you're employed by SiriusXM at times, it was a joke. You got that money at SiriusXM because Steve Cohen used to work with you at WFAN and gave you that contract. You are not worth the money. You don't know dick about baseball. And I am tired of you having a spot that somebody else should have. And there's James the Greek. There, there you go. No, I, so let me let me say this. I I can't believe that a producer would, would talk to him. Because I guarantee they had conversation before the show. Uh, hey, Billy Bean died. Oh, my God. And he's like talking about it. And, and, and they're like, okay, you know, you know, you got to talk about he was the gay player and 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 you know he came out and you gotta talk about this stuff like they never had that conversation they just assume hey by the way there's two guys with the same name you kind of have to as a producer make just hit that one like yeah you know this is what you should talk about own it as a producer uh if you don't ask that question you just assume and you let him go on air that's that's also on you i've watched uh mad dog uh on or uh, high heat the other day and he's only on there for like half the show a quarter of the show and, and and that to me is like what's the point it is your show right and then so maybe maybe the game is passing him by maybe the the time is, is passed and and again i've watched a lot of his takes and and there are a little tough takes a lot of them are tough takes i feel like it's just emotion and not directly paying attention to the situation but again he's in, incredibly insightful and knows a lot about baseball but maybe current news is passing a little bit he knows a ton about the history of baseball more than i do more than you do but does he know anything about today's game absolutely not i have been in those producer meetings where they say you're gonna have this guy on today and he has no idea who the player is no idea yeah yeah and that that when you're when you're at that point and i mean don't get me wrong sometimes there's new players or guys that hit the scene or whatever and you've got a lot going on Sometimes it's a little tough. You got to educate yourself on, on some guys. Like I'll, I'll, I'll interview reporters all the time, and I have no idea who the reporter is. So I got to educate myself on the reporter, or, or I'll interview a player, and I'm like, okay, I've heard the name, but I need to learn about the guy. And then you do some, you take five minutes and do some research, uh, find about him, find about something personal. And if you're not doing that stuff, and you just hear Billy Bean die, and you just assume it's the A's manager uh, or A's GM, that's that's a tough one. That's tough. A little bit, Bobby, a little bit. A little bit. And now, uh, with that, uh, that, that uh, end of the episode, make sure you tell your friends, make sure you tell your family, make sure you tell somebody you hate about the show. If you don't like it, make sure you tell somebody else that, that, that you hate to watch the show so they won't like it, do whatever. Send out a bunch of likes, send out comments. We want to know who you would love to come out and watch. Who would you pay to see? Um, let us know if you think a Hard Knocks episode for Major League Baseball would be good and let us know about uh, the Mad Dog, what you, how you feel about that and how James is wrong about his opinion. So see you next time.